Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kids Time with Jesus. Once again, this program is brought to you by the Church of Pentecost USA, where children discuss so many issues in the Bible and how it applies to their lives. My name is Auntie Golda. Hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, hi children. children of the world. Amen. Jesus. Friend of little, little children. children. Wonderful. Welcome once again, friends, to Kids Time with Jesus. Today we have another important lesson for you. But before we start, we just want to say, all of you that are Zooming in, God bless you. Grab mom, grab dad, and tell them to come and let us hear the word of God as these precious ones discuss very important issues in the Bible. But before we start, I will let them introduce themselves. All right, friends, would you introduce yourselves to everybody so we know who is here with us? So go ahead, guys, and introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Ampa Ekukosa, and I'm from New Jersey District. Good. My name is Frank, and I'm from New Jersey District. My name is Darren DeGroofer from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Dr. Lennon Ford from Cleveland District. Hello, everybody. My name is James Osei. I'm from, from PIWC, New York District. Hello, oh, my name is Benedict Jabot from Cincinnati District. Right. Welcome, everyone. And God bless you all for zooming in. Today is another important topic. But before we start, I have been following you on the apologetics lessons that you guys were having, and it was really wonderful for the month of June. So I just want to ask you a couple of things, and then I really want to know how the apologetics lessons really, um, how you guys were able to remember some of it and how you are applying it to your lives, right? Because everything that we learn, if we do not apply it, it doesn't really benefit us. So can anybody tell us what you remember from the apologetics lessons that you guys had in June? Yes, James. I remember that we were learning about the one true God, who's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and about the different parts of the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Wonderful. Anybody else? Darren. I remember that we were learning about the Bible and how the Bible is a way, it's a lamp to guide, it's milk to nourish, it's a mirror to reflect. Actually, basically, it's everything. Awesome. The Bible is everything. Benedict. We also learned in the Bible about different parts, how the Old Testament is divided into the Pentateuch, the historical, and so forth. Wonderful. So, can I ask you something? How many books are in the Bible? 66. 66. Okay, that's easy, right? How many in the Old Testament? 39. They're good. And how many in the New Testament? 27. Oh, yeah. I got some Bible students here. Wonderful. Now, how was the Bible written, guys? How was the Bible written? How do we know that this is really the Bible? That's can I say that tells us. Yeah, Frank, go ahead. So when you read um, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, it said the Bible was inspired by God and was written by the men under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Wonderful. What does that mean? What does that mean? Can anybody give us more details? Yes, James. That God inspired people to write the word, like he was speaking through people to write the Bible to write the Bible so we can take the Bible, every word in it, and it is the word of God. Guys, so that's what our man was. Wonderful. So today, we are going to learn another aspect of the Bible, okay? So this time, we are really going to delve into the book of Judges. We are going to delve into the book of Judges and we are going to learn about the book of Judges and how some of the things in this book applies to us. 
Okay. Our topic today is paying attention to God's commandments, paying attention to God's commandments. And the subtopic is lessons from the book of Judges. Lessons from the book of Judges. Now, the book of Judges is the seventh book in the Bible. Okay. The book of Judges is the seventh book in the Bible. So let us go ahead and remember our memory verse. Okay. So our memory verse for today is Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Hebrews chapter two, verse one. I'm going to say it one time and then we're all going to say it together. Okay, so Hebrews chapter two, verse one. This is what it says. We must pay most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. Okay, boys, can we all say that? Let's go. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter one. one. attention. Therefore, we have heard, drift away. Amen. Amen. All right. So, let us delve a little bit into our memory verse. If somebody says you must be careful to pay attention, what is he trying to tell you? What is the person trying to tell you? You must be most careful to pay attention. Yes, Benedict. You're basically telling me that you have to be focused. You have to be focused. Good. What else? Uh, can I say? Yes, so, Frank. So it's telling you that you must be careful so that you, you do not go away from the Lord's word. Wonderful. You must be careful so that you do not what? Go away, right? That is the same meaning as what? Drift away, right? So if you look at our topic that's saying pay attention right so that is what we want to talk about today paying attention so that we do not what we do not drift away you know even in the house sometimes your mom will tell you listen i need you to watch these particular things right i don't want you to forget these things. One of the most important things is that your mom will tell you, do not forget to pray, right? I do not want you to forget to pray. I want you to what? To pay attention, okay? So today's lesson, we are going to read about the people of God who did not pay attention and what happened and the lessons that we can learn from them. So our scripture readings will be Judges chapter 2, verses 7 to 19, and then Judges chapter 4. So Benedict, can you start with Judges chapter 2, verses 7 to 19, and then James will take Judges chapter 4. Thank you, Auntie. I'm reading Judges chapter 2, verses 7 to 19. I'm reading from the NIV. The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the elders who outlived him and those who have seen all the great things the Lord has done for Israel. Joshua of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the land that is in his inheritance, at Tanath Harris, but in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash, after the whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, and that generation grew up who knew neither the Lord or, nor what he had done for Israel. 11. Then is, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the vows. They, for, they forsook the Lord and the God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. 
They were, followed and worshipped various gods of the people around them. They arose, aroused the Lord's anger. Because, mm. for they, because they forsook him and served Baal and the Anthrosis, in his anger against the Israelite, Israel, the Lord gave them into the hands of the raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, whom they are no longer able to resist. 15. When Israel went out to fight, the hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them, just as they are, just had he had sworn to them. They were all in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hands of these raiders. Yet they would not listen to the judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshiped them. They quickly turned from their ways of their ancestors who had been obedient to the Lord's command. 18, whenever the Lord raised up a judge for them, he was with the judge and saved them out of the hands of their enemies. As long as the judges lived for the Lord, relented because of their groaning under those who oppressed and afflicted them. 19, but when the judge died, the people were turned to their way, even more corrupt than those who, of their ancestors, following other gods, serving and worshiping them. They refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you, Benedict. James, please go ahead and read Judges chapter 4. Thank you, Auntie. Mm -hmm. I'm reading Judges chapter 4 from the modern English version. When Ahad was dead, the children of Israel once more did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord sold them into the hands of King Jabin of Canaan, who ruled in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera. He lived in Harasheth, Hagoyim. The children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Sisera had 900 iron chariots and had forcefully oppressed the children of Israel for 20 years. Now Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophetess. She judged Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. The children of Israel would go up to her for her to render judgment. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord God of Israel commands you, go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor and take 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun with you. I will draw Sisera, the commander of the army of Jabin, with his chariots and large army to you at the river Kishon and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, then I will not go. She said, I will indeed go with you. However, the way you are going will gain you no glory, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kedesh. Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kedesh. 10,000 men went up on foot with him, and Deborah went up with him also. Now Heber, the Kenite, had moved away from the Kenites, who were descendants of Hobab, Moses' father-in-law. He pitched his tent at the oak in Zananim near Kadesh. Then they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Sisera summoned all his 900 chariots, 900 iron chariots, and all the people with him from Harosheth Hagoyim to the river Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, get up, for this is the day that the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men behind him. The Lord routed Sisera and all of his chariots and all of his army with the edge of the sword in front of Barak. Sisera dismounted, dismounted his chariot and fled on foot. Barak chased after the chariots and the army as far as Harasheth Hagoyim. The whole army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a single man survived. Sisera fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between King Jabin of Hazor and the family of Heber the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not be afraid. So he turned aside to her in the tent and she covered him with a rug. He said to her, please give me a little water to drink for I'm thirsty. So she opened a leather milk container, gave it to him to drink and covered him. Stand in the, he said to her, stand in the entrance to the tent, and if anyone comes and asks you, is there a man here, then you say no. Then Jael, the wife of Heber, took a tent peg and a hammer in her hand and went quietly to him, for he was fast asleep and tired. She drove the tent peg into his temple, and it went into the ground, and he died. So now, as Barak had been chasing Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said, 
Come, and I will show you the man whom you seek. When he came in, there was Sisera fallen dead with a tent peg in his temple. So God humbled King Jamin of Canaan before the children of Israel that day. The children of Israel grew more powerful over King Jabin of Canaan until he was no more. Amen. I just read the entire Judges chapter four from the modern English version. Amen. 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 God bless you, James. Thank you so much for wonderful reading. All right, everybody. So, hello, Esther. Hello, Joel. Hello, hello. everyone. So, you know, this is the story of a people that God has chosen. The people of Israel, we all know they are the chosen people. We all remember when they were in slavery in Egypt and they cried unto God. And so God gave them a deliverer, Moses, and through all the plagues, and everything that they went through in Egypt, by the grace of God and the power of God, God was able to deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh. And they were no longer slaves. Okay, so now they are on their journey as a people and their God is the almighty God. And so God through Moses gave them commandments. And he gave them rules for them to follow. But just as we read, and we will discuss, the people of Israel, they were one of the stubborn people you would ever meet. Sounds familiar, guys? What happened when jo Joshua, the leader after Moses, right? Oh, Frank. Go so ahead. after Joshua died, mm -hmm. um, after Joshua died, the Israelites did evil things like worship a different mm -hmm. god. They worship different gods, right? They did not. What other things did they do? What other things did they do? Yes, Declan. They did, they did evil like stealing, like stealing and taking money putting more taxes into just one thing and other stuff. Right. And there was something to that they did that God has definitely told them not to ever do. Yes, Benedict. Worship Baal. Worship Baal. Right? Remember, I was talking about the commandments that God gave them. He said you should worship God and worship him alone. Guys, remember when we were doing the apologetics, what did we say? That we believe in what? The one true God. So you see, same for us. But the Israelites, they played with other gods, right? The gods that when they came on the land, they found. James, go ahead. Yeah, the Bible also says in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, that Actually, when we but when someone disobeys someone, it's um disobedience, which is also rebellion. And like I said, first Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, that it says from the King James Bible that for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So that means when you disobey God like the uh, like the um that the Israelites were doing, it's as similar as witchcraft and iniquity and idolatry, which and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, and they were doing both of those things. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and, it, and you really would expect the Israelites to be people who would believe in God because God formed the entire nation out of one man and his sons. And the, what I've expected and with all the miracles that God has done for the Israelites, you'd expect them to listen to him. Because God, and, and even the, the funny thing is, why did God choose the Israelites? He could have just mm. gone to Rome I went to Julius Caesar and said, hey, Julius Caesar, listen to me. I'll make you Abraham instead. And, and, and the city of Rome will become like my dwelling place. But God specifically chose the Israelites. And frankly, the, their name, the name Israel actually means he who wrestles with God. So for mm -hmm. people who wrestle with God, I guess stubbornness is supposed to be expected. But still, that doesn't justify the fact that, I mean, okay, well, you do wrestle with God. So, I mean, that's a fair point. 
you can't exactly beat that, yeah, but you still shouldn't. We, the, the whole point of when God is dis, um, when God is um, disciplining the Israelites is because he doesn't like obedience because in his eyes, it's, a, it's akin to witchcraft. Amen. Wonderful. James, God bless you. Let's say disobedience is like what? Witchcraft. We never want to be associated with that. But see, sometimes when we talk about the people of Israel, we kind of distance ourselves, you know, guys, and we'll say, no, if we were there, we would never do that. But let us begin to think about even us as children. Sometimes when we disobey, right? When we know exactly what to do, but we do not do. Right, because what it says is that there came a generation that do not know God. They didn't even remember all the good things. Just as James was saying, all the good things that God had done for them. Remember all the plagues? Whenever God was delivering them from the hands of Egypt? Yes, Darren. Yeah, when you were talking about the good things, I think that some part of it was also the Israel, yeah. The, the ancestors of the Israelites who did evil. Because the Bible, when you read the commandments, the Israelites were actually supposed to tell their children that this is what God did. But then the, the Bible says they neither knew the Lord nor knew mm. what he did, meaning that they didn't actually do their job as spirit. So it was actually their fault. Because oh my had, goodness. They didn't know that God existed. They didn't know that there was a being who created the entire world. So something happened what's somewhere, ironic, right? What's ironic about that is actually in the New Testament that the Israelites were mad at the Gentiles for committing sins, yet they mm -hmm. were also doing Gentilic sins. Like that, that's just, just the irony of that, right? There. They were being hypocrites, right? Like some people do. Yeah, Benedict, go ahead. And later, because of them being disobedient, it's kind of ironic too, because they get stuck they become later, they become slaves to their own promised land. Mm -hmm. So, and can you imagine? They have worked with God before, they have seen the miracles that God had done, but some way, somehow. So, boys and girls, you see how important it is that we're going through the apologetics, right? What it is is that what parents, what pastors right what we know about the word of god that is what we are trying to do what to impact on all of you precious ones so that we do not forget to do our jobs right because just as darian said it came to a point that some of the parents forgot their duty and that made them not to remember how powerful and how awesome god is Right. And so because of that, they fell into a whole lot of trouble that we would actually talk about. Now, Benedict will go ahead and then Darian and Declan. OK, Benedict, go ahead. And I kind of see it as a thumb, big, big, big thumbs down, because mm -hmm. now that your kids don't know Jesus and they grew up and they don't tell their kids and they die. And when the judgment day comes by, God's not going to say you're not just going to tell God. Um, I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. God's not going to take, I don't know, as an answer. It's either life, it's either life or death. So you better, it's, it's kind of relies on the parents. Like it kind of falls down from them. That's why after they go down, God's specifically going to be nagging on the parents because what they didn't tell their kids about Jesus. So it's, it's really not the kid's fault, it's their fault. Good point. Darren. Well, Benedict, I have to agree with you because, well, yes, you didn't tell them. The Bible says that we shouldn't actually blame, the Bible says that you shouldn't blame a, a parent for what a child did, a child sins, nor should you blame a, a child for what the parent sins. Because if you did that, then it was like saying, okay, from now on, because Abraham obeyed, because Abraham decided to obey God, okay, mm -hmm. and the Israelites did always, did always hate God and God also hates them. That can that is entitled to be like mm. because Jacob cheated, yet now there are the Israelites, and those people happen to be God's chosen people. You think that God will have mercy on Esau who got cheated two times actually? 
Yes. Before, before yes, the, Declan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to talk about like Samuel and like mm -hmm. Eli, as a matter of fact. God used one person, Samuel, to to say to tell Eli and his two sons what he had done. Number one, they were not they were not obeyed the, the laws. They knew every, they knew everything, but then they did not obey it. So that means so that's basically like the Israelites. They knew the laws of the thing, but then went immediately Moses went up to Mount Sinai to talk to God. As you can see, they started to create, they started to create something that could, that they could see and touch, mm -hmm. even though it was an idol. And number two, from the last time, then the next time, then Eli forgot to teach his children and tell them, stop what you are doing, but then the, the children didn't listen. So I agree with what Don says. So the two, one, it's a decision for the parents and the mm -hmm. child to make. When the parents tell you something, it, the child can either, they have two, they have two choices. Mm -hmm. To either listen to their parents or to not listen to their parents. And the parents have something else also. Like when their child tells them, please, um, I think that this is the right thing to do. Um, the parent has two choices also, to listen to them or to lead them and disobey them. Yes, good, yes, really one. good point. Now, so Esther, go ahead. I think Esther, go ahead. Um, also, I just wanted to add that also it's um, when they're like older, like let's say like 19 or something, it's gonna be harder to persuade them to um, make that decision. That's I'm a very happy. good point. Good job, Esther. So you know what Esther is saying? That parents have to start early, right? We have to teach you precious ones, the goodness of God, the commandments of God, right? And the consequences that come with it. You know, God is our loving father, but he expects us to do what? To do good, right? And now, we, because we have been washed with the blood of Jesus, we are the Israelites now. We are the children of God. And how often do we not what pay attention, right? How often do we not pay attention to what God continues to what to tell us? Ampa, go ahead, and then James will come in. So, uh, when the Israelites started to uh, disobey God, God punished them and gave them to their enemies. So when you read the Bible, God said that obey your parents and do. And when they are doing bad, you have the right to do the good things and not follow your parents so that you become a good kid. But when the Israelites obey God, God sold them to their enemy because they serve vows. And God said, when you read the Ten Commandments, it, the God said, Obey, only obey me. Do not obey any God apart from me. So the Israelites did bad things. That's why God sold them to their enemies. All right, let's hold that thought. Now, James, go ahead. Okay, so me and Declan kind of have an issue because every time I'm going to say something, he says what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm gonna, like it's, it's getting weird. It's like you I'm have the same say, mind. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say the exact same thing that... um. As parents and children, like like he said, he said it all. Like he <laughs> said that it's up to the children to um what you call it, listen to what the parents tell. And like Esther said that when the kid is 19, it's gonna be harder to make decisions because when the kid is 19, he's out of the house, he's in college. Exactly. And in college, he's gonna have influences. Like my dad was hearing a story about this lady who went to college and there was a witch in her in, in her in her as her roommate. Mm. And my dad was like, things that are going on in college <laughs> and all these public places. And if you're not a Christian, if your parents don't teach you the stuff that you need to know right now, then you won't be able to like protect yourself. That's why the Bible said the armor of God. And that's why the Israelites always let themselves, they were always vulnerable because Really, I think is, the Israelites really represent the entire world because exactly in, in in the Israelites there were different groups of people. For example, like in the world, when you go out there, there are always people who are against you. Like when they when when they went into the wilderness, they were like, "Man, 
when we were in Egypt, at least we got food to mm-hmm. eat. At least we had a bed to sleep in. But you guys were crying to God for him to save you. You know, you're going to blame it all on Moses. You just sent us out here into the wilderness to die. And, and the funny thing is when God was giving you guys manna, that's bread from heaven. You think I get bread from heaven to eat? I want bread from heaven. How yeah. did you get we didn't we really have heaven? loved it to have bread from straight from heaven? Exactly. See? Now, Joel, I just want to ask you, how, in what ways are we like the Israelites, right? In what ways are we like them? Because they do bad, God punishes them. He, he gives them judges, right? To help them out. They go back again. In what ways are we like them? Um, we still sin a lot. Oh, um, yes. Um, some, you, like most people don't believe in God. Most people don't believe in God. And um, so, like, sometimes we turn away from God at most times. And then, like, and then we'll, be, we'll come back to God. And then sometimes we'll, like, turn back and, you know, be back and forth. And, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah, Esther, go ahead. And also, one thing that I wanted to add to Joel's contribution is they also like we also sometimes complain like let's say um you like um my mom made jollof for example and you actually wanted like pizza or a burger or something that's kind of complaining amen it is okay so you guys better eat the jollof mom makes okay and then <laughs> next <laughs> next like time I you should... get the pizza yeah darren go ahead i would say that sometimes too we also want different things than what God gives us. Because to me, sometimes, you see, the Holy Spirit, the tongues, I like it and everything, but then sometimes <laughs> I feel like what the Holy Spirit is praying about is like a trial for me that to make me just my feet. And right now, I'm not such a good for the trial. <laughs> Absolutely. To me, to sometimes I want to like, okay, Holy Spirit, you can talk and everything, but please, please don't just do anything that I don't like. See, since sometimes that's the way we are. We, mm. we, like, we like you know, we like the worldly things and then also like the spirit thing. Like what the Holy Spirit, we like being able to be doing miracles. You go and there's someone shut, mm-hmm. someone with the shadow and then they are healed of the sudden. We like to be able to do that, but then you don't like the part where you have to pray, 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 pray. Three hours you have praying, no you too. <laughs> and you see, so Bible, what it is is what? Yeah, Declan, go ahead. Bible, in the Bible too, one of the prophets was able to run faster than a horse mm-hmm. because of the Holy Spirit. And then sometimes the Holy Spirit can literally just take him and move him to another place. Like talk about teleportation. That, that was, that, and now we're having cars. Even cars take three hours. But back can in do that. Mm-hmm. go from place to place. But back then, all, all he did was Holy Spirit take and then the holy spirit takes i I, I would want that gift like holy spirit take me to bahamas (laughs) right right here i'm a bahamas and and like i was saying when um darren was talking about that they neither knew god nor nor knew what the good things he had done for him like sometimes me and mom have these like bible discussions when we're talking Mm -hmm. about like unforgivable sins And and jesus said that one of the unforgivable sins was um when you blaspheme me against God. So, I, so me and mom having a discussion, she was like, so how do you blaspheme me against God? And we were like, it's when you insult God. And how can you insult God when you don't acknowledge the fact that he even exists? That's the one sure way to insult God. And that's dangerous because well, if you're living in sin, you can't go and ask God for forgiveness because you don't even think that God exists. How is he supposed to forgive you? If you're going through something, how is he supposed to help you? So everything that the Israelites did, they technically, they brought it on themselves because for you to completely forget what God has done for you, where God stands in in your life, who you are in terms of a Christian, that that's dangerous situation to be in because God's word is the Bible and the Bible is um, your armor. But if you don't like, who do you want? You, do you want armor or the person who made the armor? Because if the person who made the armor, every time he will keep bringing you newer models of the armor with better protection. So I would want, but then again, I'd want both the armor and the person who made the armor. So as a Christian, we need God because you, we can't blaspheme and say God doesn't exist. We need God and we also need his armor, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. So the that's Israelites just... had none of those. And that's why they were always, they were always, um, 
sinning. And, and what's and what's interesting is when when the, when the judges died, they were more corrupt than the previous generation. And yes. it was because of that corruptness that even brought all this trouble and 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 sorrow and stuff. So on them, yeah. That is such a powerful statement, you know? You cannot forget who you are, guys, because what we read from our memory verses, say what? Pay attention so that you don't drift away because if we do not take time, we will drift away like the Israelites and forget all that God has done for us. And you know what, guys? God has a way of getting our attention. If we do not pay attention, God will get our attention one way or the other. And we do not want that. We do not want that. All right, Declan, go ahead. I have two comments to say. Mm -hmm. Now, my first comment is about what James said. I wanted to add to what James said. Uh, like, yeah, about a one month ago, my father was talking about sin. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, sin is not a very good thing. So no. he told a story that just, um, that he just imagined this time, that let us say that one person, you just keep sinning, you sin, then you go to the priest to pray for forgiveness, immediately you are done. You go and sin more, then mm. you go and then, then you ask for forgiveness again. And then you do it again and again. So just like the Israelites, they just, they went more corrupt. So they went deeper and deeper and deeper from, from the Holy Spirit. So that it, 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 went, it went to a point where the priest will say, Stop. Why are you enough of it? <laughs> In less than about a day, you're able to come to repent this amount of times. So not my so this is what I usually do. As when I'm sin, when I'm when I know that I'm going to bed, before I go to bed, I pray for forgiveness so that for all the things I've made. And in one of the Bibles, someone wanted to pray. For what he would do, what he would send, and for what he has already sent for. So in that case, the next time that he says, he knows that he's okay. He's covered. <laughs> yeah, Benedict, go ahead. Let's listen to Benedict, and then we'll come to Frank. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I kind of think it's actually bad that still, even though they lost early, the judges, even though the judges mm -hmm. died and moved on, they still fall back into sin. Because even, here's what I think of it. Even though, let's think of it as a Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. Even though you don't have your leader, you still got your map, you, you can still have your phone, you still got places that can lead you to where you are. Even if bad things happen, there's always light shining through. That's why I see when bad things happen to people, I just say, look at the good things in front of your face right now. Quit mumbling and talking about all the bad things that are going on and focus. Like the Israelites, they can never, when they lost the judges, they always scattered. And bad mm -hmm. things attract more bad things. You have a bad attitude, more bad things are going to be coming at you. Me and mm -hmm. my son, I'm talking to you about this. And this guy had a really bad attitude, and his treehouse got struck by lightning, surprisingly. <laughs> and more bad things that are happening because of his bad attitude. We got to learn to put a smile on our face and have good behavior. So it doesn't mm. attract bad things. And even if we lose our leader, we still got one person up there that's looking down on us. Amen. Powerful. And you know, I like what Benedict said. He said what? Focus. Guys, let's remember that. What? Focus. If we forget, guess what we have? We have this manual right here right? That has everything in it. Everything that God says that we should do, says that we should not do. If I could just pause right now and ask that, what does the Bible say about love? What does the Bible say about love? The Bible says, love mm -hmm. your enemies so that you go to heaven. Right? Love your enemies. Now, is that easy? It is Absolutely not. not right but that is what the bible says right so you can decide to hate but you will go back it will be the same law 
right? It will be the same thing that God is asking of you. So just like the Israelites, why don't we just do it the first time? You see, I wonder myself, why don't we just do it the first time so we are free? That we keep going on and on and on and we get the consequences and we come back just like the Israelites, right? I see James has something to say about that. Yeah, I also wanted to say, since we're talking about the Israelites and the judges, that even the judges sometimes sinned. Mm. Look at, to be honest, one of the some people I can't understand is Samson because me too, me Delilah too. Jane. was like, so what's your weakness? And Samson was like, tie me with ropes, and she tied you with ropes. <laughs> Like, what's your weakness if you tie my hair? And then he was able to rip it off. Like, right there, you should have known that she's up to something. Something. You should have known. But of course, and then he's he like, so that's why he like, he got into trouble. And then um, God, uh, and when God made his hair grow back again, when he got his, his strength back. What's also interesting is that, the, what was also interesting is that it was Delilah that God used mm -hmm. to um, get Samson. No, that God didn't bless another guy with strength to come and defeat Samson. I think God was trying to like teach us a lesson, kind of like that. Um, we should always like listen to him because he gave um, Samson's mother three three conditions. He should mm -hmm. never cut his hair, never drink wine, never eat honey. So that was like the punishment. And also back then in the Old Testament, the Israelites, um, when they were going to beg forgiveness, there were different animals that they would kill based yes. on different, different sins. So if you were a farmer, right, wouldn't you get tired of always losing your sheep? Like even because you, you keep sinning and you have exactly. to offer you have them. To kill it the entire sheep now you can't right, just right. and take it to the you have to carry the sheep and it's not everybody who lived around the temple you have to carry the sheep and let's just say you, you took some fish now you have to grab a sheep and walk like 15 miles just to give it to a priest don't take fish i like, guess that's simple like even if you don't um even if you're not a Christian, shouldn't you actually get tired of killing your oh, own animals yeah. yes. and losing? Like, that's money you're, you're losing there. So that's just something I, I wanted to say. Yeah, hey, that I'm is true. Can... Now, um, Darren, and then we'll come to Declan, and then we'll come to Frank, and then we'll move on from there, OK? Hey, mm -hmm. Just like James said, this is one thing that one when James was speaking, this was one thing I thought. So there's something to, I don't think, you, I think he only had physical strength. Like in his brain, he wasn't actually really old. He wasn't thinking. <laughs> yes. Because they tied you. There were there were many tests. And then mm -hmm. if I were if I were something, I'd stop over that way. So why do you actually do that? Mm -hmm. I'm not if I told you my real strength, I would have literally been taken by the Philistines and killed right then. Another thing that what I'm thinking is that he wasn't thinking was because of the fact that in the end of his life, he said, Let me die with the Philistine. Mm. He had great strength. You basically had everything you wanted. And then you wanted to die with the Philistines. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of asking for grace from God. So you that, see, that's it's so mm. important, guys. We are talking about what paying attention, right? And then I think Declan had something to say. Yeah, go ahead, Declan. I wanted to add to what Darren says about physical strength. Um, but then and the spiritual strength. My father also once again said this, <laughs> that you might be the strongest man on the earth, mm -hmm. but in you own you are the strongest man on the earth, but then um, spiritually you are weak. Mm. Very weak. So yesterday, yesterday my father if my actually as last two days, my father said this that that you there are five there are many things that can take you down. The mm -hmm. end that the enemy plans of taking you down. Your prayers, number one. Your how you your Bible study, number two. And everything and everything else. You use this everything to your advantage. So you use also the Bible to you mm. your to, your fullest, to, to your fullest to the fullest to your fullest advantage. Wow. Frank, go ahead. So a different way to um go away from God is like when your mom tells you to go to school and you don't. And again, when your mom tells you to go to school, you go. And again, when your mom tells you to school, you go. And when you get to school, you will be late 
and the teacher say, why are you, why are you saying things in your head? And when you come home, you say it's all God's fault. So you're trying to get away from God. Mm. Frank is being very practical, very, very practical as children of God. Because one thing, you see the commandment, there's one of it which says that children obey your parents in the Lord. And you know what it says? It said, this is right. Okay, this is right, and it is actually a commandment with what? With the promise, and the promise is that it may be well with you, and you will live long on this earth, right? Oh, wow. and Frank, the, exactly, mm -hmm. and Frank is saying that some of these things, you know, we talk about, and the Israelites, and the Israelites, but we have to really personalize it and see how does this apply to me? Me, this modern day Israelite, what am I doing? Am I paying attention? Am I just like the Israelites and I do things that I know I should not do, right? And I go back and I say, God, I'm sorry. And then I go back again. I say, God, I'm sorry. If I am doing that, I have to be careful so I do not what I do not drift away because what is going to happen? There will be consequences. Okay, and I don't want that. I just want to experience the love in God. Okay, I don't want to experience the part of God that will what give me something that would make me pay attention, right? Um, I see Benedict's hand is up. Benedict, you go ahead, and then I go to Esther, and then we'll go to Darren, and then we come to Ampa. All right, Benedict. So go ahead. I want to say one. Another thing about the Israelites and how this kind of connects to me, if the Israelites, one way they could have avoided all that trouble is staying around good people, staying around themselves. The Bible says that we hang around good people so you don't rot and you don't learn the bad thing from mm -hmm. other people. There's also a member that I know that says, Muni asa siso and chine. I said, chine day ra. Then I will best share in chine. That means that the, the salt, the chine is salt or sugar, mm -hmm. and that if you don't, what's the point of the salt or sugar if it's not good? They're going to throw it out. And that's what happens to most people. So I want to personalize that and say, hang around good people. And this relates to real life, especially when you go out to college yes. and school. Hang around good people. Meet good friends that actually mm -hmm. know good behaviors. So you can learn their good behaviors and get smarter up here and spiritually so that when you go out into public or to some fancy place, you know how to act and people will think good of you. I'm telling you right now, people are watching you and they say, oh, wow, this kid, man, look at that fresh kid with some good brains over here. Or they're going to say, do you even train your child? People are mm. watching you. So you have to make sure you're on your best behavior wherever you go. Wonderful, Esther. So I just wanted to add to what Benedict said. And also, I just wanted to say that, like when, like when you're disobeying, it also affects, like it also affects your parents because like when you disobey them, it kind of hurts their heart. Like you may it think sure like, oh, does. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to say that it, I think that if I was an Israelite, I think it would have been easy to follow God. Like, I don't know what would have not been easy to follow God. You know why, Esther? Because the Holy Spirit is there. Where? Right here. All of us, right? So because the Holy Spirit is in you, I'm so glad you said that. You know, some of these things, it's difficult. Let's face it. That is why we need what? The Holy Spirit right? So Esther is saying it would not be that tough for her. You know why? Because she knows who the Holy Spirit, that is what? In her. Wonderful. Darren, go ahead. Esther, I agree with Esther, what Esther was saying. Then I just wanted to let you people also know that there are also huge consequences for also not respecting your parents. Mm. And the Bible, this is what God told Moses, that whoever disrespects his spirits must be put to death. The person is gone from the earth. That is true. Yeah, Alpha, go ahead. Uh, so what I wanted to add, I want to add something about something. So when we were talking about something, I heard mm -hmm. that like something or disobedient is, mm -hmm. disobedient is God and God punishing. 
But when you read the Bible, it says his mother told him to marry an Israelite, not a Philistine. So when he did marry a Philistine, he disobeyed his mother. So God punished him and let the Philistines get him. So we should be obedient to our mother. Wonderful. Now back to James and then back to Darren. So when Darren said that um, you, the kid will be put to death, it actually back in the olden days, the one, their, their one um, form of execution was actually being stoned to death. So yes. there were like, there was a, there was a public center where they, they would like, they would they like, let's say you were criminal and they were going to punish you in front of a crowd. So they take the kid there and everybody was stoned the, the kid to death. But why, why would you bring your own child to be stoned to death? I, I don't understand that part. <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean, a li- I don't so understand that's a little that wild part. here. I know. Yes. Well, well Joel, also, Joel, I've heard from you for a while. Do you want to say something? Go ahead. Oh yeah, right. In the Bible, um, when you disobey, um, I learned that like sometimes it could affect like how long you can live. Yeah. If you honor your father and mother, you may live you may live a longer life. Now, how um, many of us don't want to live a longer, beautiful life? We all do. Okay. So Joel is reminding us that obedience to God and to our parents is very, very important. Let's come back to Esther and then we come to James. Darren, what's your hand up? Uh Yes. Okay. So how about we come to Esther, James, and then Darren? Okay. So I just wanted to add to James about him saying about how, like, you know, the children were stoned to death. I just remembered that a story of like Stephen, which was one of the disciples, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. was stoned to death before um in Jerusalem for his faith. Yes. And I just wanted to say that a lot of people have been stoned for like their faith and for other like crimes that they've done. And Stoning people was pretty much in the past with what mm-hmm. they did in the past. And they also hung people. And yes. like what was weird was that when I was like younger and I heard that story, it didn't really bother me. And like it like it I, I actually like thought that it made sense. Like I didn't think that it was like a story that I didn't get. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to say that like stoning people and going to jail was like whole different a whole different era. Yes. You know. Yes, and then do you know, because of that, one thing that we have to do is to really pray for missionaries, guys, because they still face things like that. Things like that still happen. Missionaries get persecuted all the time. And it is up to you and I, whenever we are, you know, thinking about the things that we can do to promote the gospel of God, one of the things we can do is to pray for missionaries so that wherever they are, God will protect them from all kinds of persecutions. Now let's go back to Darren, right? James, James, go ahead and then Darren. Speaking of missionaries, I was really about to share a story about mm-hmm. um, this missionary went to some part of, I forgot where exactly, and over there they didn't believe in Christ. Mm-hmm. So some people, they took him to a forest where they were going to kill him. And in that forest, there were no lions there. There were like lions were like not in that forest. But as soon as they were about to kill him, two lions just appeared and started scaring the men away. That so is the that, power of God. So after wow. that, the missionary's faith was just like, he, he never doubted. Oh, God for yes. A second. Because it only attacked the men who were going to kill him, and they mm. didn't know that lions like were not living in that forest for like a long time. So that was just going to speak about the, that we should we should be praying for missionaries. And also, how come whenever you, when people actually um look at kids, they look at their parents because a kid is the reflection of how the parent trains absolutely them. so like my mom was saying that in this world whenever somebody whenever a kid does something right they always say oh wow the kid has a good father <laughs> but whenever he <laughs> does something wrong <laughs> this is mom so because of that, my mom is training you she's like training me she's like i'm gonna train you so that one day no one can come and insult me <laughs> so yeah, but that is up, that is so true that is so true and even, now, and even when it doesn't actually reflect on the training, it actually mm-hmm. reflects physically because I've, I've, I've seen many people come and tell me that, oh, wow, you really look like your dad. And, and yes. someone actually told me, I have my mom's nose. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> no, physically, too, we are we're also a reflection. That is true. That is true. All right, Darren, and then we'll go to Ampa, and then we come to Esther. How's that? 
Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> That's all right. Ampa, were you going to say something, right? Oh, let's go to Esther then. All right, Esther, go ahead. I just, there was like two other disciples that got stoned to death, which mm -hmm. was of the other James and Thaddeus. Yes. And, and um, aka Judas, but it's not Judas Iscariot. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. wanted to add it to what I said before. Amen. Wonderful. And so you see, this does we are saying, right? We have to, we're going back to pay attention. Paying attention. Disobeying God has what? Has consequences. Now, God raised up judges for the Israelites whenever they drifted apart and then they helped them. And one of the judges that we actually read, who remember the judge that we read about? That's a powerful, wonderful woman. Yeah, Esther, I'll let you tell us. Deborah. That's right. That's Deborah. The Bible said Deborah was a judge. And what else was she? She was something else. Anybody remembers? Yes, Darian. A prophetess. A and prophetess. A oh, yeah. Yep, lovely dude. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was a powerful woman. And those days, they didn't even count women. Can you imagine? They didn't even count them. Women and children were like, okay, stay here. The men will take care of it. And this woman, because she was available and she knew who she was, she was so confident. She was a judge and she was a prophetess. Wow. Can you just imagine that? And she's the one, she sits under her palm tree and then she delivers justice to men and women. And she was so respected. All because what she knew who she was, she was confident, and God was using her mightily. Now, Esther, go ahead. So, a lot of people know Deborah for her wisdom and courage, mm -hmm. and she's also the only woman in the Bible, only woman who woman judge in in the Old Testament, yes. who um who is known for her like faith and actions. Amen. Yes. And every time that we read these things, I want you guys to personalize it. You know what I mean? To internalize it. That If you make yourself available. You see, those times, women were not really considered to be that important. But see how God used Deborah. So even now, you can be a child, right? You can think, well, maybe I don't matter. But no, not at all. God can use it in such mighty ways. And even grown-ups will come and seek what? And seek counsel from you. Right, Darren, and then James. In Deborah's time, there were actually two people who actually did great things. Mm -hmm. Because Mara was the commander of an army, yet he couldn't take down one man. One man, he couldn't take That's down. That's true. And then there one little Okita, the person even lived in a tent. And then you, you managed to kill the commander who held 900 iron chariots. Now, wow. <laughs> That's right. And this, these are two powerful women. Oh my goodness. Esther, don't you feel too good? You know? Yeah. These are powerful women. You know? So those of us watching as girls, you can do awesome things like Deborah. I'm telling you. Just as all these one, our wonderful friends are telling us. Well, James. I just wanted to say that Deborah actually um, means B. In Hebrew, Deborah, her name means bee. And if you look at bees, um, bees are they work in a hive. They work mm -hmm. together. And and guess who's in charge of bees? The queen. That's right. The queen. The 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 the, the queen is like the, the decision maker. If they have trouble, if they need to migrate, the queen is the one that makes the important decisions. So Deborah is actually like what her name means as 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 a as a queen. And you know what? What did Jabin say? What did he say? He said, if you don't go with us to this wall, what did he say? He said, if you don't go, I, I won't go. But if you exactly. go, I'll go. Exactly. You. you see, he said, listen, I need you to go with us. If you don't go with us, we are not. And that shows how important Deborah was. All because even though everybody was doing what was right in their own eyes, Deborah separated herself, right? to do the work of God and look how wonderful things that God did with her. And it's the same for all of you, friends. If you avail yourself 
God can do wonderful things with you, but you have to pay attention to the commandments and the rules that God is telling you, that your parents are telling you, that your pastors are telling you, because God will get your attention one way or the other, like the Israelites, if you do not pay attention. So we are going to go around for the last time. I think we have really have a wonderful time today with our lesson. And I pray that we will all would be paying attention. So I'm going to go to Benedict. I'm going to go to Esther, Darren, and James. And then we'll come to Joel, Ampa, and Frank. Okay. All right, Benedict, go ahead. I just want to say everybody can be like Deborah, but just make sure you don't miss your chance. Mm. In Revelations, a lot of people are really going to be looking and seeking God because in that time, it's going to be like the mini version of hell before Jesus comes and all the tribulation. And God's going to point to new leaders. And there are going to be false prophets roaming around and the Antichrist is going to come in full power. You can be one of those people who separate and stand aside from the group. Mm. But make sure when your time comes, you do not miss a chance. Because God is not going to give. And those times when he really needs somebody, if, he, if your chance flies by, and you don't grab the ball, it's going right past you. That's so right. You step up and take your place and become the wonderful. Leader. Esther, go ahead. So there are also other judges other than Deborah, mm -hmm. like Joshua, Othniel, Gideon, Jephthah, Samson, Eli, and Samuel. And I also figured out that Othniel was the first judge in the Bible. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, Darian. We wanted to say that all of these way, um, all of these people, they all had reasons for being chosen. Like they mm -hmm. had specific ones. Gideon needed to learn a lesson. I believe that is why God chose him. Then yes. we have Barak. Barak, he, 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 I don't think he even had faith at all. <laughs> Deborah, people are coming to you. To, then, then they tell you go and leave ten thousand men. You're like, okay, I only go if you want the one. <laughs> the only person apart from me name that go to that went to mm -hmm. yeah. i would only go if you go yeah. then then what like what was barack thinking because that's because a prophet is there doesn't mean that you win the war yeah. but i uh, just but it's to, true though because in, in in the olden days when moses when they were fighting a war well all moses hands were up then they were winning but when his cans came down then they were losing the war that's true. No, but but you understand what to moses add, did just to add to moses you. talked to god face to face deborah we never hear in the bible and the bible says deborah talked with god face oh, to but face. even when he talked yeah. he didn't technically talk face to face because moses had to hide behind a rock and the spirit mm. of god was passing and even the passing of god's spirits like it shook the mountain and it terrified moses so <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that one reason why Barak wanted De Deborah to come was because she um she was a prophet. Yeah. No prophets, some more prophets. Mm -hmm. uh, like there are many prophets. And God used many of the prophets to help the Israelites a lot. But just me. That is why. So <laughs> this is what I used to say to Don that if you want a blessing. Let it come from the extra anointed person. Mm. Extra anointed blessings. So the when Deborah, so mm, that extra anointed person there was Deborah. So God used Deborah, who was the anointed person, to help Barak win the war. But you don't understand. If I'm Barak, loving this conversation. So uh, what I'm taking in this is that Declan is the more anointed <laughs> of the two. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Ampa, go ahead. Let's hear yours. Go ahead. I just wanted to ask something about Deborah. So Deborah was obedient to God. So that's mm -hmm. why he prophet. So children of God, if we are not obedient, God will not choose us. But if we dis if we disobey God, we will then be punished by the Lord. But yes. if we are good and we dis and we be obedient to our mother and our father, God will choose us and let the Holy Spirit come through us. When you read Acts chapter one verse nine, it says. But the Holy Spirit come upon you before the Lord. So when you when you when you when you be obedient to the Lord, you will be very 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 uh, happy and live the heart with God. Amen. Amen. Hey, Amen. Auntie, Frank. I have something to um talk about what Papa said. Uh huh. Go ahead, about Frank. Being 
So about being obedient, it's not about like doing things that God like don't like. Mm -hmm. So obedient makes you live long, but like when you read the Bible, memory verse say, obey your parents in the Lord for Jesus, right? Um, so when you obey your parent, it make you live long, but when you don't obey your parent, when you grow up, you will die short, like 80 something, because in the old time, um, no one they act live like 950 yeah. years before you die. So yeah. when you obey your parent, God will add ages like you will be 110 years before you die. Powerful, yeah, James, go ahead, and then Joel. So I was going to say something that the Israelites were being tempted by the devil, and the Bible says. Actually, I actually I have like two like my favorite versions of the Bible. One mm -hmm. is the is the um MEV. It's it's the more modern English version where you know you can you can relate to it because King James and mm -hmm. then he walk it and he said and all that <laughs> stuff. You don't understand a word. Exactly. The one is the Message Bible. It always it's, it's the funniest version of the Bible in the in the whole world. If you want, go go and read the Message Bible. You will laugh. So here's what the Message Bible says. It says. I'm reading from First Peter chapter, uh, First Peter chapter five verse eight. Sorry, and the Message Bible says, "I'm find it." And, oops, I lost it. Uh, go ahead, uh, just look for it again. It's fine. Okay. So, how about you look for it, and then Joel will give us his thoughts, mm -hmm. and then we'll All come right, back to you. It. I found you the found message. it. Okay, go ahead. It says, "Keep a cool head." Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce, mm. and will do nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes. Mm. So what's interesting about this is that other versions say that the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he devour. He may mm -hmm. devour. So it's not like you're walking into trouble. The devil is literally looking to cause trouble for you. So if you if you're a Christian who doesn't know the Bible, you, you'll be pancake. Because That's a problem. When, when he comes, he, he's literally looking to cause trouble for you. And what's ironic is that even the devil of all people knows the Bible. How much more That's true Christian? And even some Muslim, me and mom were having a conversation. And like some Muslims, when they want to, when they want to like prove their religion is the best, they'll 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 they will memorize the Bible, true. look for what they think is the flaws, and then use it against you. And you, we as Christians, some of us, we don't even know the Bible that well. So we need to find that Bible and we need to use it because like devil and people out there want to commit because you say that since you're the son of God, why don't you make the stones into bread? Like he's, he, he's really questioning Jesus saying, mm -hmm. if you are the son of God. So you want, he wanted to get a reaction out of Jesus. Like, yes, I am the son of God, but no, Jesus, since he was the word, it's not like he knew the word. He was the word. So he was able to, he was able to, um, counteract what the devil said so as christians Absolutely. we need god and we need the bible and the word of god yes Amen. yes yes and so you will not have to be walking talking bible guys we have to always get into the word and know the bible now i'll give, I'll give joel the last word and benedict if you have something to say and then all too soon we would come to the end of our lesson for today. I had a wonderful time. I hope you all did the same. And then we'll definitely be back next Saturday with another lesson. So Joel, go ahead. Um, God, like, I just wanna say that God has a main purpose for every single one of us. And um, from like Adam all the way um, to the end of the Bible, you know, every single person that was in the Bible had a special purpose and a special role and, and um, yeah. Oh yes. So all of you friends, you are special because God has a purpose for you. And that is a fact. Okay, you are special. God has a specific purpose for you. So don't ever forget that and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Okay. God bless you, Joel. That was very important. Now, okay, Darren, and then Benedict, and then we would say bye. <laughs> well, James, okay. So Darren, Benedict, and James. How was that? Okay. 
And unless anybody else has something else to say, and then we'll say bye. All right, go ahead. Okay. I wanted to say that yes, God has plans for you, but then it's up to you to decide if you want to take those plans. That's because right. Let King Solomon, he King Solomon was supposed to be very wise. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be the wisest king. Kings was actually very wise in those days, mm -hmm. unless they wanted to die in. But kings were very wise. <laughs> so, so this is what you'd have thought. You'd have thought that Solomon would have obeyed all of God's commandments. But you see what happened. He got straight away. God told him, you shall not intermarry. He mm. knew this law. He wanted to be a good king. Yet he, the Bible says that the Lord hated the gods that he served. And That's he true. served to the Bible itself. God hated them. Mm. The Bible does not say about Baal, but God hates, specifically, the Bible says God hated them. I don't think God just mm. wants to hate this. So God really made it very clear mm -hmm. that he doesn't want us to drift apart. Wonderful. Benedict, go ahead. I just want to add to what you said about the devil and the war. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that's why the, that's why the devil sends bad things our way because he mm. wants to pull us down and he wants us to join his side. Let's take Job, for example, real quick. How the tornado and all his children dying and every, every, all his cattle going away, getting killed and being taken away, all that. The devil wanted to bring him down. And that's why the devil, God allowed the devil to send bad stuff at you. Because he really wants to see, are you on my side or on his? That's true. Well, James, you get okay, the I'm final good. word. Let's go. Uh, um, just Solomon had problems in general because people <laughs> had issues with one wife and you go and marry 700. Like, what, 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 you, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> anyway, what I was also going to say is that... um. Like, like the Solomon thing. The reason why Solomon died, actually, it wasn't because um, it wasn't because he married the wives. It's because he followed their gods. It was not mm -hmm. te technically because he married seven hundred wives per se, but because um, he 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 died actually in their temples in the Bible. One thing I also wanted to say is some this some guy said something funny. He said that. If you're a Christian and the devil hasn't attacked you at least once, then you're not a good Christian. Now, I'm, okay, I'm not saying go and say the devil come come and attack me, but mm -hmm. if the devil doesn't try to stop you, that means he's not afraid of you, and that's dangerous. The Bible says we'll be able to smell the the devil. And I actually tried, I tried smelling around the house and my mom was like, hey, go outside because <laughs> the, the, the devil's not in here. But yeah, as Christians, the, the devil should be afraid of you and he should try to get rid of you. But if he thinks you're a sack of potatoes, we got an issue here. So the reason, well, that's why I, I keep saying that word of God, prayer, Holy Spirit, and God himself. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. All too soon we have come to the end of our program and the takeaway is this. We have to pay attention. We don't want to be like the Israelites who always, when God delivers them through judges, they forget and they go back and they keep doing this over and over again. We do not want to do that because we do not want to face the consequences of God. And we have the Holy Spirit that is going to help us. Finally, friends, you are special. You are important. God has a purpose for you you, each and every one of us, just like Deborah. And so we have to make sure that we are staying in the word. We are staying in the word. Okay. I know that you all read your Bibles. I know that, right guys? I know because when you come on, you really show that you know your Bibles. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. And next week we will meet again for another wonderful time kids time with Jesus. And just remember, we would still be talking about judges. All right. So just go ahead and read about Gideon because we will talk about Gideon next week. Bye for now. God bless you all. Have a wonderful Bye. week. Bye. 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 You guys Bye. were awesome. Bye. We're still recording. Bye. 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 Yeah.